All right, welcome back, everybody. We've been talking a lot about the stock market. I don't know if we can pop up a quick picture because it opened at 9.30. The uh, green arrow was up, which was a good indication. So we're talking about these ups and downs that happen in the financial world. And what can we do? What can, what can the average investor do to sort of capitalize on this? And there you see it. So up, uh, looking pretty good. Let's break down the numbers and get more information from financial instructor Michael Mazarant from the Retirement Education Foundation. So, Michael, that's good. We like to see it up. Um, does this make up for the big down we saw on Monday? So, on Monday, we're pretty darn close to getting back the losses we saw on Monday. Okay. Now, we're still not back to where we were on July 31st. Okay. July 31st, we were at the peak for the year. We're still about 8 9% off of that, but still up 10% for the year, which is not bad. Okay. So... If somebody is sitting at home right now and they say, I want to invest in the stock market, and I'm talking independent of a 401k, mm -hmm. right? Um, first of all, what's the benefit of doing that? Why should everybody do that? So outside the 401k, having your own accounts is helpful because you get more flexibility, more freedom. In a 401k, you're stuck picking from the funds the, the, the employer provides to, to you. In your own personal accounts, you can pick your own things. Now, that being said, we never recommend people to start stock picking market timing which you have that flexibility to do in your personal accounts, which can be dangerous, mm. still stick to the index funds and the ETFs. When we talk about index funds, is there one big index fund with all the same stocks in it, or are there several in different index so funds? So there are lots of indexes. You know, the three main ones that when people talk about the stock market, they're yeah. typically either talking about the Dow, the NASDAQ, or most commonly the S&P 500. Okay. The S&P 500 tends to be the most representative of the U.S. economy. And it... Is it a good idea when we see those dips in the market? Should you grab a hold of a chunk of the S&P 500, invest in that? So if you have extra cash sitting in checking savings that's not needed in the next couple of years, by all means, throw some dollars into your Fidelity, your Schwab, your Vanguard account, throw it in the stock market because over time it is going to recover. Now, a lot of people may, may be worried, well, what if I put money in the stock market and it goes down further? You know, the news, there's, a, there's an election this year, the Fed's raising rates this year, what if it right. goes down further? Right. If people get caught up in that market timing mindset, it can be really dangerous because there's never a big green flag saying now is the time to buy. You'll right. never see that headline. There's never no worries. There's always something going on. But if, if we have a long-term approach, just keep adding to the account. Over time, you're going to win. Uh, is it a good philosophy to invest in companies you know if you if you go to Costco a lot um, uh, is that a good stock to buy those sorts of mentalities so this can be a little tricky because there are some quantitative pieces here and some qualitative behavior pieces here mm. when it comes to behavior it can sometimes be easier to stick with a company that's going through some volatility if you like or believe in that company okay so for example if someone loves Disney stock or D Disney the company Company and they own Disney stock, it might be easier for them to stick with that company through volatility. Okay. But mathematically, quantitatively, just because we might love these companies and they're great companies doesn't always mean they're great stocks. Mm. There were a lot of companies, and Disney's a great example, Microsoft's a great example, that went decades, 10, 15 years of zero, zero stock profit. growth, yeah. <laughs> even though the companies themselves did very, very well. So just because it's a great company does not mean it's a great stock all the time. And that's why just buying the index, buying the whole basket of all the companies, instead of trying to pick the winners, is the best strategy. Mm. Um, it, do we watch what other people do? There was a lot of chatter about, among some people, about um, Berkshire Hathaway and what was going on there with um, uh, Warren, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, sorry. Warren Buffett selling off a bunch of Apple stock. And are we taking clues from other people so who seem to know what they're really, doing? <laughs> we really shouldn't be. Warren Buffett is a totally, totally, he's, he's playing a different game yeah. than any other American is playing. Yeah. He's managing his company. He's worth billions and billions of dollars. So when there's the headline of Warren Buffett sells billions of dollars of Apple stock, that sounds like a huge deal. He he owns so, so much Apple stock, he's right. just trimming some of the holdings. So people should not be looking to Warren Buffett or any of these famous investors for clues. Warren Buffett will tell you himself, 
investors should just be buying the index. That's straight from him. Yeah, yeah. If anybody has lessons about um, just put some money in an index fund and let it ride, it's Warren Buffett. Absolutely. Don't try and uh, cherry pick and time things out. Absolutely. Uh, Michael, tell everybody, remind everybody of the website because you've got great resources. So we shorten the website because there's, oh. a, there's a lot of confusion. The website now can be found at refedu.org. Okay. R-E-F. EDU.org. E exactly. Yeah, so retirement education fund education.org. Okay. Exactly. Very good. Michael, thank you as always. Of course. Uh, and we will be right back.